What's good, everybody? In this video, we're doing a review on simplifying radicals, but this video is going to be different than my other ones because we're going to include cube roots and we're going to do some practice problems at the end of this video. So please stick around so you can see those problems. So the first thing we need to understand, guys, is the difference between square roots and cube roots. So when we look at square roots, we have to understand that there will not be a number in the index. So we have to know and assume that the index is 2. Otherwise, we will see a number such as a cube root 3 or a fourth root or so, so forth. Now, when we think about square roots, we're looking for pairs, basically. So we're saying, hey, when you multiply a number by itself, it's going to give us a product. So what does this mean? The square root of 4 is 2. But when we break it down, right, let's say we're under the radical, we have 2 times 2, multiplying the same number by itself. This is the whole basic of square roots and perfect squares. All right? So when we take that rule now and we apply it to cube roots, it's a little bit different. Because instead of pairs, we're looking now for triplets. We're looking for 3 of the same numbers. So the cube root of 8 is 2. But why is it 2? Because when we think about it, 2 times 2 times 2 is going to give us 8. So when we break down that cube root, meaning we multiply the same number 3 times, our answer would be 2. Now, what we're going to do before we actually get into practice problems is look at more examples of simplifying cube roots versus square roots. So when we look at square roots, right, 16, 16 is equal to 4 because this is 4 times 4. It's a pair. So anytime we have a pair, it's a perfect square. So 16 breaks down to 4. When we go to the square root of 25, this is equal to 5. Why? Because under the radical, when you break it down, right, we're multiplying the same number. So these are examples of perfect squares. And now we're going to look at some perfect cubes. And just remember that perfect cubes are the same exact thing, except for you're going to multiply by that number one more additional time. So if we look at the cube root of 27, does that exist? Yes, the answer is 3. Because when we multiply 3 times 3 times 3, that is what's going to give us 27. And as you guys see, it's the same exact number. We have a perfect triplet pair. So this is the difference between perfect squares and cubes. And just to make sure we look at one more, we're going to do the cube root of 64 which is equal to 4. And once we break this down, we know 4 times 4 times 4 would give us the cube root of 64. Now, let's say we apply this to variables, because variables could also fall, um, fall under this rule, too, when we talk about simplifying radicals. So let's do some quick erasing. So let's say we have x to the second power. So what they're saying to us is, hey, how can we simplify this radical? And guys, it's, it's, it's basically simple. To simplify this, we know x squared is going to be equal to x. Why? Because every time we have a pair, meaning two, when we simplify it, it is just x. So this is what I mean, right? 25 is the same thing as 5 squared. So if I asked you for the square root of 5 squared, you would just say it's 5. This is the same exact thing. It's just more of a concept versus a number value. Now, let's say if they give us a higher exponent number, x to the fourth power. Now, when you expand this out, every time we have x squared, that equals one pair. So we know x squared is equal to x. There goes our first x, and then x squared is equal to another x. So when we multiply x times x, this is going to give us x squared. I normally like to tell my students to divide, divide the exponent by the root. 
by 2. If we divided 4 by 2, we're going to get x to the second power. But sometimes students get confused with that. So we looked at some uh, square roots. Let's go back now and let's look at cube roots. So if I had the cube root of x to the third power, we're saying, hey, how many triplets do I have in this radical? So x to the third, that's one pair, right? That's just one pair. We have three of those x's. We're talking about cube roots. So we know that it's just one pair, basically, or one triplet. Now let's say we go higher. We have the cube root of x to the sixth power. So how many pairs of triplets do we have? Let's write this out. So I have x times x times x, right? Here goes my first pair x, and here goes my second pair x. So when I multiply these two together after simplifying, we know x, the cube root of x to the sixth power is x squared. Again, if you divide 6 by 3, you're going to get x squared. That's how many pairs we were able to get, all right? So when we apply this now to problems, how does this work? And I'm going to show you guys that in the next part of this video. So when we're talking about simplifying radicals now, guys, we're going to start off with basic radicals where we have a number and a number on the outside, number under the radical. And what we want to do is just break it down using perfect squares. So I could use 8 times 4, but if I think about my other factors, right, let's write it out. We have 1 times 32, 2 times 16, 4 times 8. So let's look at the perfect squares. That's a perfect square. This is a perfect square, and we know there's a perfect square that goes into 8, which is 4 times 2. But when we use the smaller perfect squares, we have to break down the problem more, and that's just too much steps. So we're going to use the largest perfect square. So under here, we have 16 times 2. And then when we go to the other side, we have 8. And then we're going to break down 128. Let's grab my calculator. We're going to have this as 64 multiplied by 2. Now, when you write it out like this, guys, it's so much more easier for us to see the problem. And what we have to identify are our perfect squares and simplify, meaning take the square root. So we know the square root of 16 is 4. There's a no square root for 2, so it stays under the radical. And we know here, 8's on the outside. 64 has a perfect square of 8. It comes out, and we're going to put it in parentheses because we need to remember we're multiplying. This is 8 times radical 128. It's multiplication. And then radical 2 stays the same. Now at this step, we have 4 radical 2 plus 64 radical 2. And for us to be able to add radicals, they have to have the same number under the radical, right? Under that square root symbol, whichever you guys feel more comfortable with. And once they do have that same number under, we just add the coefficients, the numbers in front of the radical, right? Because this is addition. So my final answer will be 68 radical 2. But in problem number 2 now, let's look at some different numbers and let's see what we will get once we solve. So problem 2 says this. We have negative 4 to radical 28 plus 4 radical 112. So we're going to start off with a smaller radical, right? So I have negative 4, and we could break 28. Let's see. I know 4 times 7 gives me 28, and I think that's the largest perfect square. So we broke that down, and then we're going to break down radical 112, which I believe, let's grab the calculator. So we got 112. Let's divide by, let's try 16. Oh, 7. All right. So we got 16 times 7. Now we go back, guys. Right, I take out my other marker. Perfect square here. Perfect square here. So once we simplify, we have negative 4 times 2, right? So that's, that's the square root of 4, times radical 7. And then we're going to move to the other radical. 4 times 4 
square root of 16 is 4, right? Times radical 7. So at this step here, we, let's clean up the radical. I have negative 8 radical 7, and we're going to add 16 radical 7 to that answer. Just be mindful that this is a negative 8. So when we combine these two, we're going to get positive 8 radical 7 as a final answer. But before we wrap this video up, right, we've got two more parts. We're going to go look at variables in our next section, followed by our cube roots. So when we're talking about variables now, guys, it makes the radical sometimes more trickier. But Peter's got you. So what we're going to do is let's break down 147 first, then worry about our variables. So I have 4, and then under my radical, I believe 49 multiplied by 3 is going to give me that answer. And let's just double check. 49 times 3. Yep, 147. Now, when we go to the variable section, right, we know that the root is 2. So we're trying to see, hey, how many pairs do we have, okay? And the, what I mean is, when we look at this, right, I know that x to the ninth is an odd number. So what I'm going to do is split it. I'm going to have x to the eighth times x, because that's the same thing. And then we're going to have y to the 16th, z times z squared. Why did I do that? Because once we go in, we're now going to simplify and it's going to become easier. So this is a perfect square, right? So we have 4 times the square root of 49, which is 7. All right, 3 is going to stay under there because we can't simplify it or find a square root for it. x to the 8th. We could simplify that. How many pairs are in x to the 8th? Meaning if we drew this out, right? x times x times x times x. Here goes one pair, two pair, three pair, four. So x to the eighth has four pairs. So when we simplify it, this is going to turn into x to the fourth power. This x is going to stay under the radical because we can't find a square root of just x. Okay? y to the 16th turns into y to the eighth, and z squared turns into z. And like I said, under the radical, we have 3x. Now when we clean this problem up, we have 28 x to the fourth, y to the eighth, z multiplied by 3x. So it does get a little bit tricky when we're talking about variables, guys. But remember, with the variables, we're trying to see how many pairs do we get. Because essentially, that is what a perfect square is, multiplying the same number by itself. Now, in our second example, it's going to be a little bit more complicated because we're going to have about three radicals to break down and then add together. In this next example, we're looking at adding and subtracting radicals. But with each radical, there's different things under it, meaning we don't have the same number or term or base, so we cannot combine them. So the first thing we want to do is now simplify. So 5x squared stays the same. 18, right? 9 times 2 times x times y, right? That's what it simplifies to. Plus, and then for 72, we could do 36 multiplied by 2 times x to the fourth times x times y. And if you ask me, why did I split the x like that? Remember, we're trying to get pairs. So I'm going to keep the highest even exponent. And then whatever's left over, I'll write as a single x. And then the last one, we have minus x squared radical 2xy. So when we look at this last one, there is nothing that we could do to simplify. So when we go back now, here goes our perfect square, 9. 9 turns into 3, so I have 5x squared times 3 times radical 2xy. So when we simplify this, we'll have 15x squared radical 2xy. Now we go to the second one. What is our perfect square? 36 turns into 6. x to the fourth turns into x squared. And then everything else stays the same, meaning we have radical 
x, y, because that is what's left. And we're just going to bring this straight down. All right. Now, we're still not done. We got one more radical. But luckily for us, we could just bring this all the way straight down because there's nothing we could do with it. And if we look, all of our radicals now have 2xy under it, meaning we could actually add or subtract these radicals. And when we do that, we're focusing on these terms right here. So 15x squared plus 6x squared is going to give me 21x squared, right? And then when I subtract x squared, my final answer will be 20x squared radical 2xy. So this would be our answer for this problem. And now at this step, we're going to finish off this video by going to the cube roots section. In the last section of this video, guys, we're talking about cube roots and how to simplify. Just remember that cube roots, right? We're talking about pairs of three. So something like two times two times two or three times three times three. So when we look at this first problem, there is no cube root of five. So this is going to stay the same. So three times the cube root of five. But when we look at 40, there is a cube root that goes into 40. So once we simplify this, we would have the cube root of eight multiplied by five. Now, when we look under this radical, the only perfect cube is eight. So what, the, what is the cube root of eight? It's two. So when I go to simplify this now, I have three times the cube root of five, and I'm going to add two times the cube root of five. And as a result of us having the same radical, right, same number under the radical with the same index, I can just now add two and three to get five times the cube root of five. Now, when we go over to our second example in blue, it's kind of similar. So we know this second radical, we cannot simplify it anymore, but 135, we definitely can. So I'm going to try my first perfect cube, right? 135 divided by 8, that doesn't work. Then I go to my next one, 135 divided by 27, that works. So when we come to break this down, we'll have the cube root of 27 multiplied by 5 plus 2 times the cube root of 5. Remember, we already said that there is no cube root of 5, so it stays the same. But 27 has a cube root, which is 3. So when we simplify this first radical, it turns into 3 times the cube root of 5. And then we're now going to add 2 times the cube root of 5. And as a result of having the same number under the radical, we add 2, we add 3, and we're going to get 5 times the cube root of five. And wow, look at this. We got the same exact answer. That's a little weird. I'm surprised I didn't see that before. All right, now we're on to the last problem of this video. And like I said, really hope you found this helpful, guys. And we do it for you and to make it easier for you. So when we look at this radical here, there is no cube root of two. So we're gonna leave it alone. But 16, we could break this down, right? We have the cube root of eight multiplied by 2. And when we bring down the rest of the problem, we'll notice that under the radical, there is a perfect cube, which is 8. So the cube root of 8 is 2. So this turns into 2 times the cube root of 2. And we're going to add 3 times the cube root of 2. And once we combine those numbers in front of the radical, we're going to get 5 times the cube root of 2 as a final answer. We really hope this video was helpful for you guys. Smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, and leave comments down below for future videos you guys would like to see on our channel. Or if you had a question from today's video, thank you guys so much for joining Algebra 1 with Mr. Peters.